5 amino 1 MQ versus the GLP 1 medications. This is especially if you are 40, 45, 50 and above, if you have 5, 10, 15, 20 pounds to lose, something like that. When we are looking at the, the weight loss medications, there's a whole variety now, um, they work different ways, but initially they're going to knock out your appetite. Even if over time you're going to build a tolerance and you're going to be able to eat again, initially they're going to knock out your appetite. And we see a, a drastic drop on the scale, which I understand people celebrate because for a lot of people, they haven't seen that for a long time and they, they thought their bodies were broken. And you know, it's, it's great to see that. However, when we are in that fasted state, be it uh, a medication, be it an extended fast, be it you know, deliberate calorie restriction, be it a, a highly stressed state, when you're so stressed, it actually shuts your appetite completely. That, thankfully, that's only happened to me twice in my life. And that's usually um, grief or fear that does that. But there's no nutrients coming in. So what's the body going to do? The body is going to uh, write about, and I'll, I'll explain the nuances of it in a minute. But after about 24, 48 hours, the body's going to start breaking down muscle. And you're going to lose probably two pounds of muscle every two weeks. And the scale is going to go down. Great. But that muscle that you've lost, say you lost two pounds of muscle every two weeks. So maybe you're down four or five pounds in the first month of muscle. The issue with that is, especially if you're in this age category I'm talking about, it's, you know, if you're over 50, the chances of gaining two pounds of muscle in a year are pretty slim. I'm 58. I trained my entire life, trained pretty darn hard, eat a bunch of protein. And, you know, I'm not gaining two pounds of muscle a year. I'm not losing it, but I'm not gaining two pounds of muscle a year. So my point being, if you've just dropped four or five pounds in muscle right at the beginning of the weight loss medication, let alone the people that actually, you know, deliberately try and curb their appetite long term, the muscle loss is real. You've heard about that. Maybe you didn't put a number to that. But let's say, you know, two pounds every two weeks. That's a lot. And couple that with, you know, you really, you're an outlier. If you're building two pounds of muscle in a year and you're over 50, so that in itself is a problem. And that's when we're focusing on weight loss versus body composition. So then you bring in 5-amino-1-MQ. Um, and, you know, with this, the scale is not going to drop the same. But by 5-amino-1-MQ um, <coughs> excuse me, five amino one MQ, um, blocks NNMT. NNMT is an enzyme that increases with age. What NNMT does is it promotes fat storage, it actually slows um, metabolism, and it, it kind of encourages the breakdown of muscle. So it's especially, and it increases as we get older, so it's especially problematic as we, as we get older. If you block NNMT, you can increase fat oxidization, fat loss. You can um, inhibit lipogenesis. That's inhibiting the creation of new fat, should I say that again? Inhibiting the creation of new fat, even in a calorie surplus, whilst preserving muscle, especially aged muscle. So now we've got something that is going to um, help with fat loss. It's going to uh, inhibit fat regain, actually even potentially shrinking the size of the fat cell and preserving muscle. So, you know, I'm just talking about 5-amino-1 and Q here with regards to body composition. I'll do another recording talking about more. But just regarding body composition, if you're looking to drop 5, 10, 50, maybe 20 pounds, you don't need to drop it in a week, do you? But you actually want to improve your body composition and not just see the number on the scale go down. Then, then this is the winner. This is the winner. Now, why is it that we we break down muscle? You have heard muscle loss, muscle. We've been scared about that. But how does that actually happen? Well, <clears throat> however you end up in the fasted state, so the 
extended uh, fasting, especially the, the medications. What is going to happen is there's no nutrients coming in or very little. It doesn't have to be nothing, but there's very little nutrients coming in. And I think with the GLP-1 medications, most people are not eating very much and they certainly don't want to eat protein. Okay. Very little nu nutrition coming in. And what's going to happen is very quickly, um, the liver is going to run out of glycogen. So the liver holds about four to 600 calories worth of glycogen. Glycogen is stored carbohydrates. And the reason that the, the liver holds onto this little store is so that it can release sugar into the blood as needed. So your liver generally releases sugar into the blood when you're sleeping, in between meals, in a fasted state. You know, it, it, it the liver's there to help regulate your, your, your blood sugar so it has a little store, but only about four to 600 calories. So now you've put yourself in a, a position of severe restriction um, and you're able to sustain that because you're not hungry at all. Well, the body runs out of glucose, the liver runs out of glycogen, it runs out of its store. And then the body's like, whoa, what's next? Well, the next step is a thing called gluconeogenesis. This is the creation of new glucose. The body is miraculous. What the body will do here is it will take amino acids, the amino acids will travel to the liver and the liver will convert those amino acids into glucose. And those glucose will go on to, into circulation. Think about that. The body is going to turn a protein into a carb. It can do this. So what's going to happen? So you're a day or two in and you're hungry, you can't eat. And the body's like, okay, the liver's gave, gave up its store. Now it's going to go to muscle. Well, why is it going to go to muscle? Well, it hasn't got any real dietary protein to take the amino acids from to turn it into glucose. So it hasn't even really got that. So it's like, where else am I going to get amino acids from? Okay, I'll take it from, from muscle. It'll start stripping muscle down, take those amino acids and convert it into glucose. That is why the muscle loss can be so rapid, completely avoidable, but so rapid. And again, you lose pounds and pounds and pounds of muscle. And the story I hear a lot with the medications, and again, I have no problem with them. I mean, I've got at least 36 clients using them. I have no problem with them if they're coached correctly. But here's the thing. Nearly everyone, they it wiped their... Um, wipe their appetite out at least at the beginning and the thought is oh that's okay once I get over the the first stumbling block now I'm going to get into training I'm going to eat the protein the damage is done that muscle has gone gone and it's not coming back I mean especially if you're a certain over a certain age to gain two pounds of muscle in a year which is you know the stats you can have to be eating for that. So you're going to have to get your appetite back. You're going to have to be eating for that. And you're going to have to be training specifically for that. And most people aren't going to be doing that, especially because a lot of people, like once their appetite's down, they kind of like it and they can't kind of change their dose. They get guilty if their appetite comes back. They get terrified of the weight coming back, which is a very valid fear. As opposed to 5-amino-1-MQ, which will muscle preservation, the shrinkage of the fat cell. This is the one that blew me away. The inhib inhibition of lipogenesis, the creation of new fat, even in a surplus, the increase of fat oxidization, fat loss, even without a severe calorie restriction. So it's the environment that 5-amino-1-MQ creates um, by blocking NNMT, and NNMT increases with age. So the stubborn fat loss, the weight gain, the loss of muscle that is partially caused by the increase of NNMT is why a lot of people find themselves in the situation in midlife where they've got a body composition, like, how did I get here? That is why if you're of a certain age um, and if you have, you know, maybe weight to lose, but it's not excessive. This is, is your go-to for me. Now, if you are vastly overweight, if you've got hundreds of pounds to lose, then, you know, I'm sure that's showing up in your blood work. And the reality is there that most people who are very heavy actually have a lot of muscle in the body. I mean, think about it, the body's having to move around all this very large person. So a, a very large person usually has a lot of muscle. And my argument would be 
get rid of that fat. And if you lose a little bit of muscle at the beginning, you've got plenty to spare. But most of us have not got plenty of muscle to spare. And if we lose it, it is a problem. Sustained weight loss, I don't care how you're doing it, is incredibly problematic, if even possible, when we're losing muscle. Incredibly problematic, if indeed possible, when we're losing muscle. Guys, this is the stuff I coach. Um, five amino, one MQ. Uh, I've been using it for three years. I've been using my own brand for, for two years. Uh, if you have the same concerns that I did, and that was um, uh, losing muscle with age, and, you know, wanting to... Wanting to... Um, manipulate the pathways that are already there but working against us a little bit as we age so um, link in bio or fibermino.com and um hope that hope you found that interesting <laughs>